In today's video, I wanna break down the idea of losing body fat in a manner that allows us to keep muscle and even build muscle while losing body fat. When I'm trying to lose body fat, right? When I'm trying to go from a body composition like this down to a body composition like this, this video right here of me, I've lost body fat, but I have not lost muscle. And I've been able to maintain it because I follow some guidelines that I'm gonna show you right now. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Bella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I wanna break down a question that I got. Great question on my Instagram direct message, which is gonna correlate a lot with, I think a lot of the questions I had when I first got into this fat loss lifestyle, because there's a lot of information, more than ever, there's a lot of misinformation. And so if you wanna just see how it's done, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the real truth behind losing body fat, keeping muscle, and, and changing your body composition in a way that allows you to <laughs> benefit from it forever, right? You're not taking these drastic approaches. So the question I got is from a guy, he's six foot two, 255 pounds. He wants to get down 215 pounds. What he's struggling with is he's using a tracker, but he doesn't know how to break down the carbs to the fats and especially the proteins. And he says, should he have 55% every meal should be protein. He also told me that the calculator he was using gave him calories of 1790, which I found to be very true. Uh, maintenance of 2200 at 255 pounds that is very low right he's already below if he's at 255 pounds 2500 would be the bottom low for maintenance for him right that's 10 times body weight i've talked about that quite a bit so i'm going to show you what my calculator the free calculator which i'll link below gave me and then we're going to discuss a little bit of the science behind why we focus on certain macro ratio ranges and we don't just do things like one meal a day and we don't just do things like carnivore without actually understanding the science behind what's working. So the first thing you'll notice when I go to the calculator on my page, and I'll actually show you exactly what I did for this person. He didn't give me his age, so I put 35. Um, he gave me his height, six foot two, 255 pounds. I put his waist at about a 40, Should sounds about right. Might be a little higher, but the goal should be to just go through here and click these buttons and get the options. I'm gonna scroll to the bottom as you'll see. Um, I did set it up to make sure his protein was 1.15%. Um, I didn't do an aggressive fat loss. That's that's another thing. You can be aggressive and you can be reckless. I would suggest you use the suggested approach and I'll explain why in a little bit, but you know, protein's gonna be 1.15 grams per pound. Um, calories from fat, I set it pretty high at 0.4 grams per pound. You can actually set it a little bit lower. But when you get to the bottom, it does a few things for you. His question was, how do I break down my protein, carbs, and fats? And you can actually, it'll break it down for you per meal. You can change it up. I've set four meals. Four meals is kind of my favorite approach. Sometimes I'll do three. The problem I find with three, I'm at 215 pounds right now. If I do three meals with protein, you know, I'm getting upwards of 60, 70 grams of protein per meal. I prefer to be closer to 50, but you know, some days you gotta do what you gotta do. But if you just look at the, um, the calories here, at 2,500 calories, which I told you, that's the low end. That's what my calculator suggested here based on you know the activity levels that I set. Um, it actually put it at about 215 grams of carbs, 235 grams of protein, and 80 to 81 grams of fat. And looking at the meals, we got 58 protein per meal, 54 carb per meal, and 20 fat per meal. Those are nice meals, by the way. You can actually enjoy yourself with those type of macronutrients. When the fat is that high at 20 grams in a meal and the carbs are that high in a meal and the protein, you know, you can have full size meals. So listen, I want to talk to you about why we do it this way. When you want to lose body fat, the number one priority is creating a caloric deficit, right? You can have perfect macro ratios, but if you're not in a caloric deficit, it's really not going to impact the body fat. Okay. So why do we worry about proteins, carbs, and fats? Each of them is valuable to our bodies, okay? Protein is probably the most over-discussed macronutrient, but for, for, for great reasons, right? The research is very clear. Our bodies are constantly using protein. Now, I know a lot of us think about protein as a benefit for muscle, right? You've heard the term muscle protein synthesis. You've heard about the mTOR pathway. You've heard about all these benefits of taking in protein, especially in a caloric deficit. It's gonna help you continue to build muscle. But all the cells of our body use protein, right? So protein metabolism is very high in our body. So we need to make sure we're getting enough protein just to ensure that we're going to keep and build muscle throughout the process of prep. So although it does contain calories, which can put you in a caloric surplus, 
These are very valuable calories. I would not suggest ever, ever letting your protein go, gosh, below, you know, this 0.75 of your goal body weight. You know, so let's say that your goal body weight is 100 pounds, that would be 75 grams of protein a day, right? And if your goal body weight is 200, that'd be 150 grams of protein a day. That's low end for what you should be focusing on. From there, and let's just say you're at 150 grams of protein per day, that's 600 calories. So you've got 600 calories set aside that should be a staple. The other two macronutrients get treated quite often as the good or the bad, right? And so if once you get your protein set up throughout the day, and again, I don't want to overstate the importance of breaking protein up throughout the day, the priority is your, your total for the day, right? There's, there's, there's a lot of research that shows, you know, our bodies can process upwards of hundred grams of protein in a single sitting that will be beneficial for muscle protein synthesis, for protein metabolism, for just overall well being. So we don't have to fear protein in a single sitting. However, there's also some research that, that suggests that breaking protein up throughout the day allows our bodies to absorb have a refractory period where muscle protein synthesis falls off and then we spike it again throughout the day. This is where the idea of four, five, six meals comes from. Um, and if you're taking steroids, there may be a benefit there to even more meals. But, you know, we're talking about, from my perspective, I'm a natural athlete. So what I have found the sweet spot for me is four meals, four meals per day, broken up by anywhere between, you know, three to five hours, sometimes even six. I don't get hung up on meal timing. I don't get hung up on the anabolic window. What I focus on is my total for the day. And believe me, sometimes that even means at the end of the day, I'm having to have 80 or 100 grams of protein in my final meal just to hit my total for the day. The, the real problem, and I think that I have come across is people fearing either carbs or fats. Now, the carb fear comes from the fact that people will address this idea that when you eat carbohydrates, it spikes insulin, right? As a response, your body throws some insulin into the bloodstream to clear the glucose. And that has gotten correlated with, well, that's the fat storage hormone. Actually, it's not a fat storage hormone. It has other purposes. The only way it's a fat storage hormone is if you are eating in a surplus. If you're eating in a deficit, you're still going to be losing body fat. And I think this is where people can kind of get lost in translation. The other benefit of carbohydrates, listen, they have so much value for our hormones, for our metabolism, for our performance in the gym. Guys, I promise you, if you're not eating carbohydrates before you train, you're gonna notice a big difference in your performance in the gym. This is something that early on, I didn't realize I was doing when I was taking some supplements with creatine, not really realizing it had 70 grams of sugar or dextrose in it. And my performance in the gym started really improving rapidly. And it was only upon later reflection that I realized I was actually taking in about 150 grams of sugar a day that I wasn't getting prior to that. All of a sudden my workouts were better. Why? Carbohydrates. Okay. So don't fear carbohydrates. However, the real reason that carbohydrates get a bad rap is because most people think of carbohydrates are actually thinking of foods that are higher in fats. So if I told you what foods have carbs, most people aren't thinking broccoli, potatoes, strawberries, right? They're thinking donuts, and pizza and ice cream. All of those foods are actually higher in fat. And so what I found most difficult when I first started trying to focus on losing body fat was controlling my fat intake every day for a few reasons. One, a lot of protein sources contain fat. So if you're getting, let's say 150 to 200 grams of protein a day, it can be tricky to get that protein without getting additional fat. And if you're not tracking that fat, because I've often heard people say, hey, I'm getting all this protein, where do I get my fat from? And I'm like, well, if you're not tracking the fat or if you're not tracking all the mac macronutrients from your foods, then you're missing, you're missing out, okay? Chicken has fat in it, steak has fat in it, tuna, although low, has fat in it, fish, although lower, has fat in it. So you have to account for the fat in your protein sources. And so for this reason, it's quite common for me to personally get my fats down to 45 or 50 grams of fat a day, which is like 10 to 15 grams per meal that becomes challenging. And so this is where things like protein powders, very lean sources like egg whites can start to become very valuable um, because what it allows you to do is focus on one macronutrient at a time and you can be much more accountable to that. So I use an app called Nutrition IX. I plug in my food. If I eat something that has protein, carbs, and fats, it allows me to track all of that information. And that's really the goal for me is to find ultimate accountability because once you get those numbers in the right ranges, 
you'll find that your performance improves in the gym, your sleep improves, your body composition improves, and that's gonna help you. And you'll notice I didn't mention any foods that you have to eat or you have to avoid, right? And so this is where the philosophy comes from, right? Though, if you are really just hearing this and going, man, I am confused. What I would like to do is set up a no cost consultation with myself or one of the amazing coaches on my team. So I'm gonna put a link below for a no cost consultation. We can discuss these ideas and how we can set you up. But if you're just looking for information on, okay, what's the next steps for me? I would say download that app, or if you need to just go use my calculator. But ultimately it just comes down to what are you actually consuming? And if you're not looking at nutrition labels, if you're not being accountable to the things that you're putting in your body, what you're gonna find is that you're constantly spinning your wheels. The two major things we need to focus on is our intake, making sure our macronutrients are providing what we need them to provide to work towards our goal. If it's fat loss, it's about creating a caloric deficit in a manner that allows us to keep building, building muscle. We do that through our nutrition and through our training approach. If it's fat loss and you don't know what your daily activity is like, or it fluctuates from day to day, having some accountability there, understanding that simply through being more active, you're going to lose body fat if you keep your calories the same. And this is where most people miss out. The Most of us, the leanest and the, the smallest, lowest body fat we've ever had in our lives are periods of our lives where we walked a lot. Comment below if you've ever gone on vacation, gone to Europe, gone on a trip and come back lighter and you didn't worry about what you ate, but you sure as hell were more active than you are normally. That's life, guys. We we sit at a desk, we work all day, and uh, typically, unless you are you know active for your work, we are less active than ever. And when people want to talk about the changes in you know health consequences over the last few decades, I think the rise in snack availability and the decrease in daily activity are putting us in a in a very dangerous position. So, although it might seem too simple and too easy to be true. Take it from a 49 year old lifetime natural bodybuilder who's gone through this process thousands of times with clients and just seen the amazing things that not only happened to myself, but to, to those that undertake this. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you guys need any help, let me know below. And I'd love to hear your comments on this, what your thoughts are on, you know, macronutrients or, or how you've approached it. Because I have a lot of people tell me like, why don't you just go carnivore? And I'll be honest. I love the idea. Guess what? I eat ribeyes two to three nights a week. I eat eggs almost daily, but I don't avoid things. I don't have to avoid sugars and cakes. I don't have to avoid treats. I don't have to avoid sweets. I don't have to avoid time with my friends and family. I got little kids. The idea of a diet that just completely eliminates certain aspects of life is A, it's not interesting to me. B, there's some, some negative research out there, right? It can definitely help curb appetite if you have an issue with that. Um, but I don't think that the long-term benefits of these extreme diets where you're just eating tons of fat and protein and no carbs, you know, not for nothing, sounds a lot like Atkins. And if you're not familiar with the Atkins diet, it was proposed a high fat, kind of high protein, low carb approach. Check out what happened to Dr. Atkins. He's no longer with us. So just look at the long-term health consequences of what you're doing. This approach that I, you know, my philosophy is, is based around the evidence of what works. And it's not only good for you physically, it's good for me mentally. I get to just live my life and not feel trapped by a lifestyle that limits what I can eat or where I can eat or what I can do or who I can spend time with, or puts me in a group of people that, you know, become very kind of energized about their approach to dieting. I don't have an approach to dieting. I have a philosophy around macronutrient ratios. Okay, guys, hopefully this helps and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.